know, respond to things, don't react. I was at one point a very reactive leader. I was just like putting out fires instead of taking a look at the big picture and then responding to the situation. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hello, 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 and welcome back to the show. It's Rick Nusky here. I'm doing well. Hope you're doing well. And uh, if, you th- if this is your first time joining us on the call, thank you very much for that. And uh, I've noticed a major in our, like a increase in our audience and, and the feedback that I've been reading through. So thank you very much for your feedback really enjoying reading through it. Now on today's call, I have the pleasure of welcoming author and former president and CEO of American Income Life Insurance and Liberty National, Mr. Roger Smith. Welcome to the show, Roger. Thank you, Rick. Thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. Oh, absolutely. My pleasure. Now you and I, we're going to be talking about your book, The Most Unlikely Leader. We're going to take a deep dive into your remarkable life that includes major business successes along the way alongside of uh, other struggles that you've had and life-threatening battle with addiction but there's so much more than that to unlock on this call so uh, let's start at the start where's home for you a home for me right now is in florida has that always been home no no i was born in new york and then raised in los angeles uh, and then i've moved all around the country what do you Uh, i've lived in a majority of states. (laughs) I know that some of the the, the world's most powerful people live in Florida. There must be something to it. There must be a a beauty to it. Yeah, no, I'm telling you, LA is calling me home. Oh, Uh, (laughs) oh, really? Actually, yeah, you know, all my my relatives, my brother, my sister, my nephews, my nieces, uh, everybody's back in LA. So, uh, having yeah, been to LA, yeah. I can understand that they've got beautiful coastlines as well. It's a, it's a, also a very beautiful place. What about, what about San Francisco? Do you enjoy going anywhere else across America? Um, you know, it was interesting for a couple of years. I actually, I lived in Arkansas mm-hmm. and that was a beautiful state. Yeah. Uh, really, really pretty. Um, lived in South Carolina for a while on the beach. Uh, that was really, really nice. So, you know, there's just there's so many beautiful states and uh, places to be. Yeah, uh, fantastic. I, I, you know, enjoy so, them all. So, in, speaking about enjoying yourself, what do you like to do with yourself? Do you like hobbies? Do you get into anything? You know, I do a lot of reading. Uh, I, I, uh, you know, I work out. I'm almost seventy years old, so. Um, you know, I got to I got to stay active. I got to keep my mind active and mm-hmm. I got to keep my body active. So, you know, I do some boxing. I do some working out. Um, I'm actually involved in community theater right now. Oh, wow. So, How are you finding that? Yeah. Um, you know what? I I enjoy it. it was, it's funny. I tell people that when I retired, you know, I was used to giving a lot of speeches and I was used to being in front of a lot of crowds and I was used to a lot of people applauding. So, <laughs> so when I retired, I went, Oh crap, man. Yeah, I'm, I don't have that. <laughs> so, so I said, well, let me try some community theater. Maybe I could get that, that part, <laughs> fill, fill that up for me. So, uh, yeah, I, you know, I enjoy it mm-hmm. and, uh, it's good. It's good for my mind. You know, keeps me active, Another keeps the memorization there. active. Yep. So, yep. Uh, yeah, well, it's all good. Tell us a little bit about um, staying healthy, because I know that you know we we all understand that people run businesses, but oftentimes people work themselves to the bone. What's your take on um, you know daily routines and, and actually looking after yourself properly? Good diets, you know, physical exercise, etc. Yeah, I. You know what I. I just made it a prior priority in my life. I remember in my forties. Uh, I could see, I could feel myself just kind of like spreading out, yeah. you know, and I went up to like, oh, almost 230, 240 pounds. And, you know, I was working all the time. I wasn't working out. Mm. And I said, man, this, this isn't going to end good. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, you know, so I got back into a workout routine and eating right. And I just think it's important. And I think that you need to make that a priority in your life because if you don't, then 
things are going to get in the way all the time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I, I envy people. There's some people, they can get up at like 5 in the morning, 6 in the morning, do their workout. Uh, that's not me. Never has been and, and, and never will be. <laughs> but uh, but I always, you know, figured out a way to make time during the day. Um, and and that was my time to uh, to exercise. And, and because I like to do the boxing, mm -hmm. uh, that was great for me because, you know, boxing, well, you better focus. Otherwise, you're going <laughs> to get hit. hit. So, <laughs> That's so, an obvious one, isn't so, it? <laughs> right? So, so in this case, I was able to get my cardio and I was able to get away from the office and get away from thinking about yeah. business and just focusing on what I needed to focus on. So well, let's extend yeah. that part of the conversation by, you know, having to clear out the mind. How important is to get that reset for your mindset for those who are coming back into the business, you know, circle? You've got to have a clear mind, don't you? Yeah, yeah, I was it that reset was really important to me. Mm. I I actually Rick, I actually had a couple of resets. So <laughs> you know, that was one and then sometime during the day I would find time to take like a half an hour or 45 minute nap. Yep. yep. You know, I had a, I had a couch in my office and, and everybody knew, Hey man, it was his nap time. Do not interrupt. <laughs> don't interrupt. And you know what? It was, it was really good. It's, it's, you know, I get back up. I'm ready for the yeah. second shift if I needed it. It's almost know? as if you've slept a whole nother day. Now tell me a little bit more about that because I know that the likes of Google at least used to have some similar program for all of their employees. Do you, how important do you think it is to get this little bit of a reset through the day and should more businesses be doing it maybe? Um, if they can. You know, I, I, I listen, I, I can't talk for other people. I know mm. for myself it was very, very important. Yeah. And uh, and the founder of the company, um, he ended up he had a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And I remember early on that he had that heart attack. From that point on, his doctor told him, listen, between one and two o'clock, you're going to take a nap. You're going to rest. And he did for yeah. the next 20 yeah. years or, you know, however many that, that he had worked. Um, he took a nap and it, 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 it worked for him. It sure worked for me. Mm, so, mm. so you talked about not being an early riser. What's a typical day look like for you? And when do you get up? Well, now, mm. now, I, I, I mean, I still, I get up at, let's say eight o'clock, but I get up at eight o'clock cause I've got dogs oh. and I got to feed them. <laughs> <laughs> and they won't and let it be they, any other way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, between I actually have on days and off days. My wife takes one day, I take the other day. Yes, yes. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, they 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 get me up earlier than I would like to get up. So it's it's a real pleasure. If I could like stay in bed till ten or eleven o'clock, I would love it. But, <laughs> not, well, speak, not the case. Speaking the about case. pets, you know, I love pets. They make me feel so good when I see them and they get near me. And I, I have to get up early in the morning too because they're, they're often talking to us. You need to get up and feed me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so how exactly. important it is it to, you know, enjoy the small moments in life like that and be present? You know, um, I, that's a great question, Rick. It's a great question. And I don't think I understood it. Mm. for most of my most of my career mm. i don't i don't think i really understood balance yeah um i sure understand it now yeah and and when i talk at different meetings and so on i i'll talk about that balance and being present in the moment mm -hmm. and so you know if you're with your family be, be present with your family. And if you're working, be present in your work and spiritual, be pre but be present at the moment for those things. Otherwise, you start to try to do this juggle and eventually balls start dropping. Yeah, absolutely. Now, you yeah, went, so, yeah, that's great feedback. Thank you so very much. Now, I know that you went from, I think you called, was it GED to S uh, CEO? Um, and yes. you were obviously high up there. And, um, the moment that you left that role, did you find that goal setting became important for you? You know, getting a new direction and what actually did you do when you left? <laughs> it was a shock. I bet. It was, <laughs> it was a shock, Rick. I, you know, because when you have 100% of what you're doing, you know, is all in one of the 
pieces of the pie mm -hmm. than you know your social, your business. Everything was wrapped up in American Income and Liberty National. Mm -hmm. When I retired, all of a sudden there was just gaping holes, Nothing gaping there. holes. Yeah, and and I literally had to reinvent myself. And I, and I remember drawing out on a piece of paper like a circle, a pie, and and just you know putting together the sections of the pieces of that pie, mm. spiritual, social, charitable, you know, all, all the different pieces and then trying to figure out, crap, how, what do I do? How do I fill those pieces up? So, uh, so I went about doing exactly that, mm -hmm. you know, doing things that like the acting, which, you know, yep, took yep. me out of my comfort so zone. So that's the social part. Or, yeah, and then uh, making sure I did a lot of charity with the company, mm -hmm. but but then when I retired, it was you know driving homeless to their doctor's appointments, or um, you know I became a guardian ad litem, which is uh, somebody like who's representing the foster kids' interests. Yeah. So I found I found like different charitable things to do because. I want to. I want to give back. I've I've really been blessed in my life, and it's a very important thing Fair for point. me to give back in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. um, you know the 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 writing of the book, and 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 putting that together, and 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 challenging myself with that, and allowing myself to to open up and be vulnerable. And share. Yep. You know there and and my book the most unlikely leader there's there's it's pretty vulnerable it's mm. me yeah, it's pretty raw, it's yes. not like, rick it's not like you know you write a fiction book and somebody says they don't like your book you go well okay but you write a book about your life and somebody says i don't like it it's like what you don't like my life too bad like, yeah that's it, what it is <laughs> it's, a, it's a very Vulnerable positions. <laughs> well, I, I'd love to spend some time unpacking the details of that book in a moment. But before we do that, okay. uh, Roger, I'd love to ask you about um, what it was like to be the recipient of the Yitzhak Rabin Legacy Award, Eleanor Roosevelt Human Rights Award, Healthcare, all these different awards. How did that feel, you know, when you started to realize that what you were doing was getting some traction and people were recognizing you? Um, you know, it, it, it felt great. It mm -hmm. felt great. For me personally, mm -hmm. uh, it felt great for the company yep. because it gave you know the company more purpose, um, you know, giving back, doing all all of that, and, mm -hmm. and um, you know our our uh, American incomes niche market was the labor movement at one time. Now it's not as much, mm -hmm. but it was a lot of you know workers and workers rights yeah. and the struggles that working people go through and so a lot of those awards were ones that involved you know working people and uh, and working families and that was really important to me and it felt really really good let's take a look at the book the most unlikely leader i love the cover you know it's very impactful just on its own now um when you wrote this book um I wonder, the, th the first thing that struck me is there must have been a lot of emotion um, getting discharged for you. How did you feel as you were putting pen to paper? Um, it was it was difficult, Rick. Mm -hmm. it was, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person that my bad experiences, my negative experiences, I, I tend to put in a compartment and lock it away, lock it away. and don't open it again. Mm -hmm. And that's that's how I dealt with, you know, the trauma in my life. Not saying it's good or bad, it is but it is. it's the way that, you know, the way that I've dealt with it. And so in writing the book, uh, I had to unlock a lot of that. And I had to bring that back out to the surface. And that was difficult. Hmm. It was a it was a difficult thing to to go through. And it and it definitely brought up you know, a lot of questions in my mind as mm, to the mm. whys and how I got there and, you know, uh, all the things that, uh, that happens when you start to open up, you know, about, about, about your past, things, things, things that you're not proud of, things that, 
you know, bring some shame, mm. you know, all of that. So did it help you heal this process? Uh, yes, mm. it did help me heal. Mm. It, it, it helped me to come to terms with who I am, mm -hmm. what, you know, what's, what's made me me. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Now, I don't, I know that you're a family man and uh, you have children, and I wonder, yes, uh, was there anything in there for them, and what have you been able to teach them about um, life in general along the way, given your experiences? So, yeah, and I have a section in the book that's called Blessings, mm -hmm. and where I talk about each of my kids, of and um. And, and that that really felt good to do that. Mm. I will tell you that uh, fun, just a quick funny story. <laughs> my second daughter is a psychologist, my middle daughter. And I, I sent copies of the book to the kids and she called me, you know, after she had read it. And man, she was she was pretty critical. <laughs> and, she, and, she, and she was going, you know, Dad, did you have like did you have like a sensitivity coach, somebody sensitive, want you know, to read the book before you, you know, and going through all this stuff? And, and I'm going, oh my goodness. Fortunately, at the same time, I'd sent the book out to a couple of my friends who I knew, you know, would tell me straight. And the next day. One of them called me and said, oh, man, it was great. I'm not a reader, but I couldn't put it down. And I was going, okay, because I was really second-guessing myself with the conversation with my daughter. I was going, maybe I shouldn't have done this. Yeah. Was this right? Was this ego? You know, so it was uh, it was nice. So, yeah, maybe, um, I don't know. I, I, You know, you want your kids to read it, and <laughs> you, ha you hope they have an open mind, but it's hard to, yeah, you know, when, yeah. they're, when they're looking at their own dad. So. Well, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they're a reflection of you in many respects, not all respects, but many of them. So I think you've done an, a, a, an admirable job as a dad. So <laughs> I'm, wondering, you much, I'm yeah. wondering, you know, um, what would the one thing be in your life that you've become a superpower at? What's the thing that you do the best, do you think, right now, given everything that you've seen? I, I, I'm sorry, as a parent? Is that right? As, well, just in general, what one superpower do you think you have? What's the thing you do the best? <laughs> I'm sure there's many. Um, I, am, I am a real positive person. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that I'm able to see the best in people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I try to find the best in people and then you know, try to help them uh, be their best. Yeah. So I, like I think that. if there's a superpower, it's, it, it would be that. I like how um, you talk about, you know, your children and, and the things that you're doing to help others make strong choices. And I think to myself, how important is it for young people to be exposed to people like you so they can make the right choices early on that sets them on a positive trajectory? Yes. Yeah, I um, I hope you know with the writing of this book that that people from all walks of life, mm. but you know especially people that kind of are stuck, you know they they feel that the 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 deck the cards are deck you know stacked, stacked against, against them. them. Yep. Yeah, yeah. That that they can see that there's a way out. That they may be stacked against them, but they can still achieve their dreams and have the successes that uh, that they want in life. So I think it's important for us to really start, I guess, opening the pages, as it were, of your book, The Most Unlikely Leader, and, and start talking a bit about what's inside the book. And um, yeah, let's start there. What's inside and, and tell us the story. So, um, you know, it, it starts with me. I was, like I said, I was born in New York. My mm. father went to, went to jail when I was three years old. So I really never really had a relationship with him. And my mom you know, was a single head of household. Um, she remarried. And at that time, we were in Manhattan. Uh, he was very successful. And, and then he wasn't. Mm. And mm. He, he ended up, we ended up going bankrupt. And back then, like if you were on the East Coast and you went bankrupt, you moved as far west as you could go. Oh. And so we ended up moving from Manhattan to Malibu, except Malibu 
wasn't the Malibu of today. It was mm. the Malibu of apartment beach shacks. You know, that's, yep, that's, yep. It, was a, it, was a, it was a surfer's town. Yep. And you maybe had one enclave of nice homes. Mm-hmm. Um, I, unfortunately, my stepfather never recovered from that bankruptcy. And, and unfortunately, um, in my, in, you know, age eight, nine, 10, 11, mm-hmm. um, where I was most receptive to, to what was happening to him, yeah. uh, he, he started having some real self-destructive qualities, you know, drug addiction, alcohol, and so on. Um, up until the age of 14, I was this really good kid, Rick. I mean, I was, I was the, the star of the junior high musical carousel. Yes. I was in the chess club, the mm-hmm. woodwork. I was, you know, doing I it. didn't get A's. I didn't get A's, but I got B's and C's. Yep. Um, and then the summer, uh, of my 14th year, um, a flip, uh, a switch flipped mm-hmm. and all of a sudden by the time I was 15 uh, I was homeless I was a drug addict wow and I was a high school dropout from that and to that it's, it's a very different contrast isn't it it was it was so quick it was so quick it is it is really amazing I mean it started off with I guess me just looking for my tribe and then it was, you know, just, I, I, I guess that I picked up the self-destructive qualities. That's what I saw, mm. um, you know, from my stepfather. But whatever it was, uh, I, I fell into it very, 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 very quickly. quickly. It's amazing, yeah. isn't it? You know, that mind shift can happen instantaneously. And it, it, this comes back to that comment about, you know, that mentoring and being around people that can influence your life. Do you think it was maybe oh. as a direct result of what he was doing that you decided that, hey, maybe that's the path for me? You know, um, I, I sure didn't have any feeling of self-worth. Mm. So so I'm not sure. I, I, I'm sure some of that permeated my psyche. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but but it was just, you know, it was a, it was a ball gathering steam at that point. Yeah. So, you know, it just it starts with a little and, you know, before I know it, I'm shooting heroin and and crazy stuff. Yeah, just crazy crazy stuff. And and you know, this obviously stands out as to why you would call this book the most unlikely leader. Tell us about the duration of that addiction and and how you started to turn things around because I think that's obviously pivotal to the book. Well, you know, unfortunately, Mm. Unfortunately, Rick, I was a functioning addict. Right. And so I was an addict from the time I was 15 till I was 35. Wow. That's a long time. Um, it's a long time. Mm. And, and, I, and I say, unfortunately, because, you know, a functioning addict means that you could still function in society. In society. Uh, I was the number one salesperson in the company. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I had, uh, run, uh, successful businesses, but the one thing I could tell you is that none of it was sustainable. Right. So, so I could do all of this for limited periods of time. You know, it, in my book, it's almost geographical. In fact, in the index, it takes you geographical through, yep. you know, New York, LA, through mm-hmm. different uh, uh, states that I lived in. Yep. And the reason for that is because it wasn't sustainable. I could start, go to a new state and start again. Yeah, yeah, refresh. But, but I couldn't stay in the same place and sustain the success that, that no. I was having. See, yeah, what did you, so, what, I wonder what sort of a story you would have been telling yourself, what sort of lies you must have been, you know, I guess that delusional mindset that, hey, look, everything's absolutely fine. Because as a drug addict, maybe you, right. maybe you think everything's fine, but you tell yourself this story where it's actually not. Yeah, no, no, I think ex- exactly right. That, that, well, how could I be the number one salesperson? If, you know, if it's that bad on drugs, how could, you know, but the reality of it is, is that you spend, there's so much negative energy 
that you spend on taking care of your addiction. Mm -hmm. You know, and 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 the opposite side of that, Rick, is that when I went, got clean, all that negative energy, I moved it into positive energy. And oh my gosh, it was just, it was a different world. Can but, you imagine? Yeah, a lot of, just imagine how, much, imagine, imagine how much, much more money you would have saved as well, I suspect. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, so, it's not... It's not a path I would I would recommend anybody. No, so yeah. tell us as we progress through the book, um, you know, your moves towards becoming a CEO and that part of the journey, because that's fascinating. So um, what happened is, you know, I, I, I've been very blessed with with three strong, strong mentors in my life. Mm -hmm. And and one of those mentors was the founder of the company. Uh, of American income, but our rapid part. And, and he really taught us about patience and about, you know, seeing the best in people. And, and I think that that was so important in, in, in him seeing the best in me, yeah. even though I couldn't see the best in me, you know, mm -hmm. he was able to see things that, that, that I surely couldn't, couldn't see in myself but um but as i said you know once i was clean then i was able to do so much more so anyway when he retired mm -hmm. um he actually had asked me if i wanted to come in and, and run the company and, that's a big uh, step isn't it it was, it was a huge step because up until that point i was in the, an independent contractor oh right you know, yep. I ran, I ran my own agency and all yep. of a sudden I was becoming a part of this corporate world, which was a complete foreign animal to me. It was, it was very, very, very different. And, and I was, I was fortunate enough again, where I had another mentor in my life who, uh, who was the head of the holding company. And he could see the type of person that I was. And so he knew that if he tried to micromanage me, mm -hmm. that, that it wouldn't work. And so, you know, he, he just stood back and he would give me advice. You know, he would say things like, listen, Roger, nothing's as good as it seems and nothing's as bad as it seems. You know, so when you're in one of those valleys, just understand this too shall pass. And when you're on top of the hill, remember that that something's going to come and, and, and hit you, <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, and, and when you think that way, then you think, okay, listen, nothing, you know, your, your highs aren't as high and your lows aren't as low, you know? And then the other thing that he said is, listen, um, you know, respond to things. Don't react. I was at one point, a very reactive leader. I was just like putting out fires mm -hmm. instead of taking a look at the big picture and then responding to the situation. So you listen you know, to this I, story. I, I listen to this and I think to myself from an operational standpoint, you must have taken a lot of your private life into the professional space because just the way you um, behave, the things you say could translate into helping uh, other employees. Did you find that to be the case? I did. I did. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think that that when when you build an organization, um, it's important that that people know that you care about them, that you want Absolutely. the best for them, yep. you know, all those things. So, mm -hmm. so I, I, I do care about people. I mm -hmm. think that, you know, I think that um, I try to remain humble. Mm -hmm. I try to have humility. I try to be of service. You know, I try to do all those things and I try to give back. And I think when you do that and you lead by that example, then the people under you will grow with those, with that same type of sentiment Absolutely. And, and hopefully with that same type of mission. So in terms of writing books, are you done or do you think there's another one inside of you? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the challenge has been put forth. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that. I, I, Give you an honest answer. I just am not sure of that. We it's talked about better think over. We talked about goals earlier. What's what's on the plans for you at the moment? What are you involved with? What projects are you getting involved with? 
Well, uh, right now, like I said, it's just basically my life has been about the promotion mm -hmm. of the most unlikely leader. So, you know, obviously a lot of podcasts, a lot of that. Um, you know, I'm also 70 years old. I mm -hmm. want to enjoy some of my life and I want yeah. to be able to travel and, you know, I got things on a bucket list. I want to, you know, see the, uh, uh, you know, the Grand Prix in Monaco and oh, yes. know, I got, yeah. I got bucket two list. things yeah. I want to see. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, look, I, look, I, so, I, I wish that uh, all of your bucket list comes true for you. Now I'm wondering, um, if people want to connect with you, they want to get, uh, the most unlikely leader, which may I say, Roger is fantastic. I, I look at this and I think there is there is a ton of value for those who are struggling and need some direction. Now, when they want to get access to this book, where are they going to find it? Okay, so they can go to my website, mm -hmm. rogersmith.me. Mm -hmm. That's rogersmith.me. Mm -hmm. uh, or they can go directly to Amazon. They can order uh, you know, any of the big books uh they can order from yep. and then on my website is also the links to my social media they can get a hold of me through that excellent fantastic well look if you're on this call today and you're you're struggling or maybe you're going through bits and pieces of your life you'd like to try and work out certainly get your hands on the most unlikely leader this is a fantastic read it's not only just a read it's a valuable insight into, into somebody's real life um, story uh, that you can take a lot away from and with that being said roger Thank you so very much for joining me on the show today. All right, Rick. Take care. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends, and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.